Hi everyone, good day. Welcome to today's video. So in today's video, we are going to deep dive on how to make our Excel file sizes smaller. So what we are going to do is we're going to really demonstrate a file and we're going to put it into different settings and then check if uh, there will be changes in the file size. So right now, I have here a CSV file with a range of cells and it's a total of 115 kilobytes. So as you can see, we have here the yellow warning sign that you will usually get when you have a CSV file. I have eight columns of data, none of which are formulated. So let's check in the file info and see that it is indeed 115 kilobytes. So we're going to try and experiment on different settings. First, let's change the file type. So the file type usually has an impact on how large the file will be saved on your computers, on your laptops. So I'm going to save this as, a, as an SLSX file or typical file format and then see if it has an impact on our uh, file size. So I saved it as SLSX and I do not have the yellow warning anymore. And with the same data, if we go to file and then info, so you will see that I have a larger file size this time. I have 131 um, kilobytes. So this is the starting file. So it's now an SLXX file with range of cells, which gave us a hundred and 31 kilobytes okay for the file size so it obviously blew up okay or added some weight to our file and it has to do with the x in the slsx when you save as file a file as slsx excel adds some information that we do not see so xml data so the x in slsx stands for xml and it actually contributes to the file size so obviously, saving it as a CSV file, which is technically like a text file, makes it smaller than a SLSX file. So is CSV file the best file format, given that you can actually do almost anything that you can in a regular Excel file versus a CSV file? Well, there's another file format that is actually the best option, probably. So we're going to save this file as a... Uh, CS, uh, sorry, an XLSB file. So Excel binary file. So let me first save it in the correct folder. So don't lose it. So we're going to save it. Oh, not the word, sorry. So we're going to save the SLSX file into a different file format. And probably this is the best file format you will ever notice uh, that will decrease the file size xlsb file format so let's save this and now that it's in the xlsb binary file format you will notice that it drastically went down from the 131 kilobyte so now our file is a just 60 plus so with range of cells and our file size is now just 61.2 kilobyte. Okay. So as you can see, the file format has an impact on your file size. So if um, you want to really save on file size, you can save your file as XLSB file. And the most common question I get is that, is there anything that changes? Is there any feature that gets lost whenever you convert to XLSB? The answer is none. You can continue working on your Excel file as if nothing happened, nothing changed in an XLSB file format. It really has to do with how the file is saved on your hard drive. So saving it in a binary format using ones and zeros is... Uh, saver in the file size compared to saving it as an SLSX file. So this is our first suggestion. So first, 
convert your file into an XL XLSB file format. Okay, now let's try to do other things okay, with the file. So before that, I'll first convert this. So we started, we're back in in the file and it's in 61.2 XLSB file format. If we save it back as an XLSX file format, does it mean that it will retain the 61.2 file format? So let's save. So we're back to change to a SLSX file format. And let's see. So if I go back, it actually reverted back to the 131 kilobytes okay, of the file. So saving it first as an XLSB, then changing it back to SLSX doesn't do anything your SLSX will still remain the same even if it went from an XLSB file format. So that's our um, first finding. Now, the next part is what if we have formulas? Do formulas contribute to the file size? Well, let's see. So right now, I have a range of cells. And I'm going to write a formula in the column over here. So I am going to, let's say, just initiate our first formula. I'm just going to bring in a random formula. So I'm going to use an if. And if I say if h2 is greater than 1, then it's a multiple item order versus a single item order so just a random formula that's not really our focus so i have a formula here and i want to of course double click that formula and check if that um will have an effect so i will double click now and then save it so let's see what happened to our file size so now we have 147 kilobytes. And take note that this change in the file size really has to do with the number of rows that I have. So right now I have a total of 2,630 rows of data, excluding the header. So if you have more data than that, it's possible that the jump would be higher. So let's see, it's again 147 kilobytes. So this is an XLSX file with a range of cells and with one column with formula okay all right and it became 147 kilobyte so the next thing that i want to check is that does the number of columns with formulas contribute to the file size so let's see i'm going to copy this uh, formula okay so and just do the same thing okay so let's what we want to see here is that do formulas contribute and if i have many formulas does it mean the file size will become higher so now i just copied the same thing and then uh, save it so that the file size will reflect accordingly so let's see the info so it's now 169 kilobytes so obviously we have um, added more to it okay so with two columns with formula it became a hundred and sixty nine kilobytes so obviously it's increasing okay hundred sixty nine kilobytes so we started out with the hundred thirty one kb and then when we added the first formula it added up 16 kilobytes of data and then now when we added the very same information the very same formula we saw that it added a total of 22 kilobytes okay in my um, worksheet so it's weird that it's not the same even if it's the same formula but obviously there's something else going on there but what we can conclude from here is that the more formulas you have Okay, the higher your file size will become. 
Now, let's experiment on this. What if I remove the formula and I will just display the answer? So I could copy the columns with formula and paste it as values. So when we paste as values, the formula will disappear in the cell, but you can still see the answer. So copy and then right click, paste special values. So I lost the formulas of columns I and J. I only have the answer that I had now. And then let's see if that will have an impact in the formula. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to try to see what happened to the file size. So initially we have 169 kilobyte and now we have 147 kilobyte. So we can see from there that the formulas contribute okay, to the file size. So XLS file with range of cells, okay, uh, without formula, or no, not really without, okay, with formulas removed using paste special values, okay. So it went into 147 kilobyte. I think it's a coincidence that it's the same file size as the one with one column with formula. So as we can see, formulas contribute to the file size because, well, technically, these are shorter K okay, texts, okay, meaning it has lower um, file consumption compared to the formula that we have. So the formula that we had was if, and then H2 is greater than 1, then single item order, which is a very long formula, come to think of it. So the formula includes up to more text than what we need, and that is contributing to the file size as well. So there, the formulas indeed contribute to the file size. Now let's try another approach when we write form when we have files. So I'm going to remove this and then so save. So this should bring us back to the very first file, uh, XLSX file without any additional columns. So file info and we're back to 131 kilobytes. So as you could see, uh, we're consistent with our file size. Nothing happens in the background. It logically makes sense that we go back to this number since we removed that column. So the next part in uh, our deep dive is we're going to convert this range of cells into a table. So I will try to convert this into a table using Control T. So control T will convert your range of cells into a table. Now before I convert this into a table, just for everyone to know, the data that we have here is actually a, a, a range of cells. Okay, they're just cells adjacent to one another. A table is really something else. So you have to use control T, and then click OK on this pop-up. And now this is a table. And it's not because there are now formatting involved, but because tables behave differently compared to range of cells. Range of cells have, they're just cells with data in them. Tables have more features. Like for example, if you notice, I scrolled up and I now lost the column letters and I now have the header names instead. Those are tables. So if I um, check, did, uh, is there any change in the file size? So it actually remained the same. Okay, so I don't have any changes right now. It It's just, you know, the data with formatted as a table. So nothing much there. But let's add a column with a formula. And let's see if that will have an effect. Okay, so I have here my formula again. And we're going to write the very same formula. So whenever you use tables, you will encounter that instead of using cells, it's now using the column name. So we'll keep that and we'll rewrite, we'll write the same formula that we had a while ago. 
but this time in a table and this is also another feature of a table whenever you write one formula it actually cascades to the rest and let's see if we have the same so if tables behave similarly then we should have 147 kilobytes right so let's save and let's check if what happened to the file size. We actually have 149 kilobytes this time. So instead of 147, we have 149. Okay, so I'll just copy this for easy documentation. So we don't have a range of cells. Instead, this time we have a table. And with one column okay with formula so we have 149 kilobyte it's larger than the one that used the range of cells so i think i forgot here so xls file with table okay so it just went back to 131 kilobyte okay so document that now, let's try if uh, we're going to get the same result. If I add more formulas, does it mean that I will have more file size? Well, honestly, my hypothesis is definitely yes. So I'm going to just use the same formula like what I did in the uh, range of cells. So I now duplicated that table, uh, that column with formula. Save. And let's see. We have 169 kilobytes. So somehow it got the same as the first uh, first one with the range of cells. Okay. That's probably a coincidence that we got almost the same one. Okay, almost the same number. Okay, so it's also 169 kilobytes. So, the, again, it really has to do with the length of the formula itself. What if I make the data of column H smaller? So, I will try to make it just letter A. So, it's just a very short uh, header and that would actually reflect in the formulas as well. So, this is a capability of the tables. So, since it uses the field names as the part of the formula, then you see that it has smaller uh, field names. And does that, does that have an effect in the file size? So I saved it. And then let's go file info. And you should see that we have 168 kilobyte this time. So it actually became smaller, but just a bit. Okay. With shorter header names, which brought us to 168 kilobytes okay so there you have it you now have we now have a comparison of the different types okay or different configurations okay of our file in another video okay i will show how we can make our file sizes smaller if it contains images and if it contains uh, pivot tables all right, because those are two separate um, problems in Excel. But right now, I hope you learned something here. And this is the best, to be honest. So you convert your file into an XLSB file format. And from there, work, like add formulas or whatever, you will get the same results. Okay, for now, that's it. Thank you for listening for this quite long video if you stayed until now. And I will see you in the next one.